Hi, my name is Desiree M. Mondesir, DesireeMondesir.com, and I want to talk to you briefly about why riots are happening in Charlotte. Very simply, riots are happening in Charlotte because people are not happy. Riots are happening in Charlotte because people have no hope, as a Pastor Tony Evans said, rights are happening in Charlotte because people have no trust of the police and of the government and the legal system in general. This is why riots are happening. Riots are not happening because black people are animals or young people are completely just without all thought. Now, we do not condone in any way, shape, or form the riots and the random acts of violence, as my friend called them, that are taking place, I will never support vigilante justice. However, before we condemn these people, we have to first admit and or understand why these riots are taking place. And you don't have to go too far because if you know me, you know I'm going to take it to the Word of God. In Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint and it goes on to say that happy is he who keeps the law um, some verses or some translations say oh, where there's no prophetic revelation where there's no understanding of God um, the people perish you know or you know just different examples of that that's precisely what we see happening this is people and you know for me the interesting thing is this is not just a a matter of people who this isn't just the fault of the people who are casting off restraint so to speak this is the fault of people who have created the situation to where this group of people feels that there is no trust there is no hope there is no future whatever their particular feeling is and so because of that a situation has been created by and large, the situation being black men, black unarmed men, shot by the police. And um, people always argue, well, he wasn't compliant. He wasn't compliant. Okay, why are we arguing things when it's an unarmed black man shot that we do not argue if it's someone with very little melanin in their skin? Because we've seen people shot with bean bags, we've seen people maimed, we've seen people taken without any physical harm to their person whatsoever. Uh, we've seen an alligator, <laughs> an alligator taken. Um, and yet magically, whenever it is a black man, or sometimes even a black woman, whenever it is a black man, oh, I feared for my life. If you're fearing for your life dealing with any human being, just being a human being, I'm not talking about someone who's literally threatening or menacing you, in which case that would be understandable. You don't need to be a police officer. If you are a white woman who clutches your purse when a black man walks by, he could be in a hoodie or a three-piece suit. If you are that woman who clutches your purse and grabs your children closer, walks on the other side of the street, you do not need to be in any aspect of the government creating laws, enforcing laws, um, executing laws. Uh, you don't need to have any position in government, certainly not a police, where you have to deal with people on a regular basis. Um, there is just this, I, I know a minister who said that he feels, and I'm not sure I entirely agree with this, but I can't discredit it. He said he feels like it's almost like a lot of white cops, not all, uh, a lot of white cops. It's almost like there's a spirit that is superimposed over the face of the black or brown individual that forces the cop, the white cop, to see a monster or a very threatening menacing image as opposed to just a black man just a black man just just Terrence Crutcher on his way home from Tulsa Community College you know when his car broke down but no you couldn't possibly be a 40 year old man who's trying to better your life by going to college you couldn't possibly be a man who's just in need of some car trouble oh no you're one big bad dude because you're big and you're black and so you're a threat that's a problem. People are casting off restraint because this is what's happening, because they don't know what's going to happen to themselves or their fathers or their husbands or their brothers or their sons or their nephews or their friends. 
you know, or their boyfriends, fiancés, you get the idea. Uh, this is a very real situation in the black and brown community. And until we understand that we cannot hope to deal with the riots, until we understand why they are taking place, we cannot hope to contain them. We cannot hope to prevent them. You cannot give some or create a solution for someone when you don't even know what the problem is. I'm reminded of one of my favorite movies, um, Ever After, starring Drew Barrymore, uh, the Cinderella story. And uh, the situation here is that her evil, wicked stepmother has taken a beloved family servant, older gentleman, sold him for her debt. And in, in this time period, when you were sold in Europe, you were going on transportation either to the Americas or Australia, whatever. And so selling him to pay off her debt, and she's just dazzling the prince with her knowledge and just the general uh, nobility around. And she's saying, what then do we, uh, uh, I'm probably paraphrasing this incorrectly, what then do we surmise but that we first make criminals and then punish them? Because they're, they're, they're going by the nature, oh, these people are all criminals, oh, they're all bad, all this. Well, the, you created, though, we as a society have created the conditions that created criminals. Now, what I am not saying is that all black and brown people are criminals. I'm not even saying the majority of us are. But what I'm saying is when someone looks at us and sees a criminal when we are, in fact, not, or even at times when we are, You've created a situation, you've created a system through the, the racist Federal Housing Act, which created redlining, which created the ghettos because nobody ever creates their own ghetto. When you've created these situations, you've created these um, high stress, high pressure situations for people to live in that causes them often, not always, to resort to taking matters into their own hands. And now when they've taken matters into their own hands, I mean, do we really, like, fault the, the, the child who's been bullied, you know, day in and day out without any assistance from his peers or his teachers or parents or anything? Do we really fault that child for taking a bat to school and beating the daylights out of their bully for just snapping? Of course it's not right. We don't say this is the right thing to do, but we have to understand why the kids snapped. You don't snap if you're not under undue pressure. You don't snap if something inappropriate is not taking place. You snap because something has been happening, and it has been happening, and it has been happening, and it has gone unchecked. It's like water on a rock. Water on a rock. You're wearing it down, wearing it down, wearing it down. And when somebody snaps, you want to get mad and blame the people who snapped. No, I'm going to need you to understand the historical, traditional systems of racism and prejudice in this nation. The spiritual strongholds, the spiritual wickedness in high places and in low places, if you consider that's what the cops are, you know, um, in, in terms of being grassroots and on the ground and actually dealing with the people as opposed to like a president or a politician. Um, these, this wickedness has created these situations. It's made people clutch their babies in fear. You know, I don't. Again, please hear my heart. I do not condone violence. I do not condone riding and going around and ripping up crap and random max violence and whatever. I do not condone that. But let me first state a riot is not the same thing as a protest. A peaceful protest. So just because you see a group of black people together doesn't mean, oh no, they're going to riot. Stop that. That's ridiculous. That's foolishness and that's racist thinking. Stop it right now. But at the same time, you have to understand the differences between these scenarios. And again, you have to understand what caused them. And you have to understand that if you would actually try, you don't even have to fully understand, but if you just try and show people that you're trying to understand the situation, then we can begin to come to some sort of a solution. We can begin to sit down together and say, okay, you have issues, you have demands, what are your demands? Okay, what was my role? role in this? Have I been creating the situations? Have I been on the police force? And have I been racist and prejudiced and ignorant in my actions? Have I turned my head away from my co-workers 
who also wear the blue, who I know are dirty in the context of being prejudiced and racist cops, who are afraid of black and brown people or anybody who looks different than them. Have I turned myself away from this? Have I remained silent in the face of the murder after murder after murder after murder of unarmed black men? Or have I only spoken out when it affects the white community? You have to ask yourself these questions. White pastors who have remained silent, you got to deal with that. You have to deal with that. And one of my dear um, friends um, from ORU inboxed me the other day. Apparently she was offended by some of the things I said. She's, she's white. Um, and I was almost a little astonished when I got her message because I'm thinking, like, you are the least type of white person I am concerned about. You get it. You know, you dated black men. I was almost a little surprised she didn't marry one. You know, she's always been around black people. She was in the gospel choir. She, you are not the type of white person I am concerned about, sweetheart. So I'm not coming for you when I make statements. And usually when I make statements, I qualify those statements by saying this type of individual. So I will never have, never, would never, um, ever in my right mind say all white people do fill in the blank. Because it's just not true. Because I can't say the same thing of all black people or all Hispanic people or all Asian people or all Indian people. I would never do that. It makes no sense. It's a gross general generalization. So if I say white Christians who, if you fill in that blank, who do whatever is in that blank, then that's who I'm talking to, not all white Christians. If I say white conservatives who... Whatever is in that blank, that's who I'm talking to. I ain't talking to the rest of y'all. So don't be offended if I'm speaking to this group of people over here when you're in this group of people over here. I'm talking to this group of people right here who need uh, help getting to a revelation of what the problem is. And so if you're over here, speak up. Say something. Reach out if you don't understand, or maybe if you do feel unduly threatened, then reach out like this young lady did to me. Reach out and do it in a non-threatening, non-angry, non-defensive manner, and don't come at the person like you've lost your ever-loving mind. Because people are angry, and guess what? They have a right to be. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. There's nothing wrong with being angry. So you cannot come at people sideways for being angry that people who look like them are being shot down in the streets for having a car breakdown on the side of the road when Muslim terrorists and white terrorists... <laughs> get taken in and actually go through, you know, are subjected to due process, which our government promises people whatever you think people were constituted as when our founding documents were written. It says people. It don't say just white folks. So we have to really be honest with ourselves as to the nature and the origin of the issues we're seeing. Don't just get mad at the black kid, the black man, the black woman who is rioting. Rioting is wrong, but don't get mad at that. You have to go and you have to deal with the root of the problem because if you don't deal with the root, it's just like those weeds in your driveway. You can pull out the top all you want to, but if those roots are still down there and worse, if those seeds that created the roots in the first place are still down there, those weeds are going to spring right back up. And I'm not like Margaret Sanger saying black people are human weeds. I'm talking about actions here. These violent actions are going to take place. Look at, look at the French Revolution. Look at what was taking place in the French government that caused the people to just say, screw it. We are just throwing all caution to the wind and we are rioting. And that, in my opinion, is an example of a godless revolution. It's not the same type of revolution as we had over here in the United States. Um, it's or before it was the United States, so we could become the United States. You know, it's a, it's a very different type of condition. You know, uh, you have to look at the conditions that were in Haiti, which led to the the horribly voodoo-driven, violent uh, overthrow of the white overlords. Again, we don't condone violence, but that's a little bit different of a situation when you're fighting for your life. You know what I mean? But again, the nature of that. How did it take place? 
why did it take place? We have to get to the why so we can understand the what. If you want peace in this nation, in your city, in your state, in your region, we have to prayerfully seek out the why and we have to do something about it there needs to be racial reconciliation because all white people are not bad all black people are not bad all white cops are not bad there wasn't even a white cop who shot you know at the situation in charlotte which just there are things about that situation i haven't been following it very closely but there's things things about that situation that are just very odd um however people are angry and we have to understand that some people are just like, screw it, I don't care what the details are anymore, I'm just going to go out and riot. I'm just going to go out and beat somebody down. It's not good, it's not right, but we have to understand. Again, Solomon said, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. We need our vision restored in this nation. Of what we said in our founding documents, that there have been inalienable rights endowed upon each and every one of us regardless of the level of melanin in our skin by our creator who is god almighty and whether or not you believe that that was for you those are the words that are written those are for us we have a right regardless of our skin color to the pursuit of life and liberty we have a, a right to uh, liberty and justice for all that is our right as American citizens and honestly as human beings. That is our God-given right. And so when we turn our heads the other way, when we know full well that that right is not being truly, uh, I don't want to say carried or given because it has been given, but it is not being carried out. And that's what people don't understand. Slavery is over. Jim Crow is over. You know, you, you, you are free. Okay, but if people are not enforcing that freedom and if people are finding loopholes, just like they did after slavery was abolished with the Emancipation Proclamation, we have to deal with that. I saw a blogger right? you know, heck, if I was a white supremacist right now, I'd be signing up for law enforcement. And you have to wonder. You really have to wonder who are the type of people, and I believe there was even an FBI warning about the amount of white supremacists in the law enforcement. Cops, please, first of all, thank you. Thank you for your service. I am not afraid of you. I walk up and I thank you all. I am grateful to those of you who risk your life on a daily basis, risk life and limb for our family, for our for our communities, for our city and our nation. Thank you. But someone who is wearing your uniform is disrespecting it and degrading it and degrading human life. You have to deal with that because you know who it is better than we do unless we've been on the wrong side of a dirty cop. You have to call them out. You have to deal with that. And I'm not saying turn them over to the public, dox them, because I believe that's highly inappropriate. But report them to your superiors. If you see somebody who's dirty in any context, be it, you know, drugs or in this case, racism, you report them in whatever way your job uh, system has laid out and you report them and then white people please y'all gotta stand together first of all you have to stand with us and then while you're standing with us you have to stand together because let's be honest we know that when the, the some of y'all that do speak out you get attacked by your own I've seen it with my own eyes when Alton Sterling and Philando Wade got shot, the first white leader I saw to stand up was Kim Walker Smith, and I love her forever. She's always been one of my favorites as far as worship, but she stood up on her Facebook profile, and she used that as a soapbox, soapbox to speak to the injustice of the situation that it had to stop. And while there were a lot of people who were empowered, I believe, by what she said and spoke up and agreed with her, there were also a lot of people who had a lot of hate for her. 
And so I am not ignorant to the fact that when y'all stand up and start rocking the boat, other white folks who have issues get upset. That's why those of you who do believe in justice and liberty for all, you have to stand together. Because as Paul said in Galatians 1, 6 through 10, who am I here to please? God or man? Who are you here to please? Are you here to please God in heaven or man down here who was created by God in heaven? That's what you have to ask yourself. You have to be honest about where you are. You have to be honest that guess what? This is comfortable. It's not comfortable, but it's necessary because guess what? I promise you, I don't like discussing these topics. Other black people and brown people and whatever people have been oppressed, they don't like discussing these issues. I bet you the people out rioting don't like rioting. The people who are peacefully protesting don't like that. The people who are having prayer vigils, you know, for these situations and whatever services, memorial services, they don't like the reason for which they are gathering together but guess what it has to be done someone has to stand up and say something or do something otherwise these things are going to go unchecked and you're going to see more of these riots and they're going to be spreading do you really want riots coming to your local suburb where you live in comfort every night do you really want that do you like you have to be honest with where these things are going and then do what is necessary in the natural and in the spirit to deal with the root of that thing because we are dealing with spiritual and natural problems but guess what you kind of have to start dealing with the natural first because there are people out there who don't care two craps about god <laughs> they don't care at all and they don't know at all anything about spiritual warfare. And so you have to deal with the natural side. Paul said the natural first and then the spirit. You have to deal with these cops first. You have to deal with these people who are being pulled over and racially profiled first unnecessarily. You have to deal with the natural side of these things first. And that will give you an in route to deal with the spiritual side to bring about racial reconciliation to the point where these people actually do want to meet with you. And hear what you have to say and try to reach a unified solution in this situation. But stop saying wait, stop saying there isn't a problem, and stop turning your head. Because, again, Proverbs 29, 18, the people cast off restraint when there is no revelation, no understanding, no hope, no leadership who really who really is doing what they're supposed to be doing. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We got a whole lot of sin going on in this nation, and I love America. I am proud, but when you are more upset at a mixed black man who is taking a knee to peacefully protest during the national anthem, if you are more upset about that than Terrence Crutcher, being shot like a dog in the streets, then you are the problem, my friend. You are the problem. And you need to be honest and you need to deal with that. Patriotism is not just a t-shirt you wear. It's not a hat you put on when it's convenient. I love this nation, but this nation is broken. And people are mocking us outside of this nation for several reasons, but this is definitely one of them. How, what do you think black men who live outside this nation think? Do you think they're not concerned for their lives when they have to visit here, when they have to travel on business or ministry, or heck, just want to visit their family or friends? When they're trying to find a place that people tell them is better for their families, that, mm, I don't know, they're killing black men like dogs over the street. We have a problem. We have an epidemic. And injustice is rife in our legal and governmental system, and we have to be honest about it, and we have to deal with it, because we are never going to reach a solution if we don't. Never, never. So, I'm done. But I really want you to think about what I've said. Do not ever condone vigilante justice in rioting yet understand why these things are taking place and if you want to prevent it in the future do something about it and what you do do that's going to be effective is not going to be racist prejudice or ignorant 
So God bless you, God keep you, God inform you and give you a revelation <laughs> on this situation. If you want more from me, go to DesireeAndMondesir.com or just see my notes uh, below. God bless you and take care.